When uh, I was selling wholesale, I was selling a bunch of different knives that were factory knives. And I liked the uh, effort that was put into building beautiful machinery. And custom knives, of course, were much, much nicer, but at a hundred bucks a piece, eh. So I got to looking at the Gerbers. And at that time, the Gerbers were inexpensive, basically. And I started buying them and found out, lo and behold, I could resell them and make a few nickels if I was careful buying. And I started doing that, and occasionally I'd run into something I had no idea what it was. And I got into... Uh, it really good with a young lady that worked for Gerber. She was super kind enough to answer questions and tell me what a particular knife was that I couldn't identify. Well, trying to find information on Gerber's has been absolutely ridiculous. I finally found out that if you look for the little brochures that were sent out with the knives when they sold them, those brochures were dated. So I began to figure out what was what, who was who. And I kept going deeper and deeper and deeper until I have a book approximately three inches thick of nothing but individual sheets of different Gerber knives and factory brochures. With those little guys and with this particular lady's help, I was able to identify Gerber knives finally. And with that information, I have written a book, which I hope to have soon published, that will be Gerber Legendary Blades 1939 to 1986. In 1986, late, Pete Gerber sold Gerber knives to Fiskers of Finland. At that time, I can only say I love Fiskers. Oh, they are such wonderful people because they made me a whole bunch of super collectible Gerbers. As far as their knives go, I'm not interested. They have good knives, they are making good stuff, but they are not Gerbers as far as my estimation goes. Of course, Pete Gerber also had knives made in different areas. Uh, a lot of them are well known that were made in Taiwan as Gerber Internationals. The early Silver Eagle and Silver Knight, which is one and the same knife with only a timeline variation, were made in Japan by Siki, I believe the name is, of Japan. And they are fabulous knives. Ultra well made to Gerber specifications. But everything that was made in the USA was made to suit Pete Gerber or his father, and they were made beautifully. Poor old uh, Joseph Gerber Sr. got into it with Murphy. Uh, he was a good man. He knew how to make money. And unfortunately, Murphy did not. And uh, he kind of... you don't know, Murphy was... The original maker. He made the original knives for Pete Gerber 
and everybody thinks 1939 they started making knives. Wrong. There were, I believe, 25 sets of three knives that were made especially for Pete Gerber in his advertising business. Excuse me, not Pete, but Joseph Gerber, Sr., that he used for Christmas presents in 1939. From that, Abercrombie and Fitch was shown a, a set of these knives, and they went rabbit. They wanted those knives. But the original one did not have a front guard to keep your hand from sliding forward onto the blade. And they said, we want these knives, but we want them with a front guard. They were redesigned, and this one set right here is the very first knives that were built for sale. They are totally different from any of the other sets in the respect that the top of the lid has the Gerber Handmade Blades logo. It does have the green felt, which indicates that they are early knives made from 1940 and 1941 by Murphy. Anything after that has the red interior or the turf purple. But these knives have the green interior. They are exactly the same looking at them except for the thickness of the handle. They are thicker than the regular ones that were made from 45 to 51. And they are extremely nice for men hand, hand carving a big rose. In 45, after the Second World War, Pete, or I keep saying Pete, uh, Joseph Gerber Sr. started the knife business again. And I have a set of the knives from 49 through 51, and all are marked different. And you can tell exactly what year they were made. For instance, this one Abercrombie and Fitch Hunter, and the Abercrombie and Fitch differ from the regular Magnum Hunters in the respect they have a clip blade and on this side they say Abercrombie and Fitch in real tiny letters. It will also have a patent number which is the lamb handle patent. On the other side they will say Gerber but this particular one, the upper one, which is in less than perfect shape, was an original 1947 first year made. And I think I remember you saying last year that that's a pretty valuable knife. I went deep in my pocket to pay for it. Gotcha. <laughs> I will not be nasty and tell you how much. Okay, that's a deal. <laughs>